what could be the iterative process in developing an effective data pre-processing pipeline? So I guess this is kind of uh, touching on that point you mentioned early about doing something small first. Yeah. So I guess, and I think I think pre-processing can mean different things. So I will I will uh, sort of take take one interpretation of that. So if you um, if you're if you're getting data off of, um, you, I mean, we can, we can use the digital microscope example, and and then the you know, um, and so where you're getting images and you're getting um, plate maps. Um, I think like the key is you want to start with um, a, a manual process. So every every time you know data gets generated, you have someone on the data science team kind of do that that manual step. Um, and, you know, maybe probably doing it in a Jupyter notebook that they can share, you know, so then you, and, and that's kind of where, uh, that's where most people start. That's kind of where you have to start. Um, you know, the, the kind of the next iteration from there is starting to use a, uh, like a, a Jupyter notebook template where you have somewhere in, you know, your Git repo, you have a, um, you have a notebook that you always copy and it has the kind of the basic outline there. Um, and, and, and the, the point of doing that is, that you you that that kind of forces you to start standardizing things because you notice if you're always modifying certain lines in that Jupyter notebook, that means that there's some other part of the process that's not standardized. And so then you know maybe maybe you also have a template for the plate map that someone on the bench side they're downloading that template and filling it out rather than starting from scratch. And that allows you to you know make that Jupyter notebook so that you have to modify it less. Um, then from there, of course, once 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 you're you've gotten to a point where you're only modifying a couple of places in that Jupyter notebook, you can then turn that into a script with a parameterized script because you know exactly what those parameters need to be. And, you know, in, in this, uh, like those, like the, the parameters will probably evolve during the time that you're using that notebook. But once that stabilizes, now you can get to a script. Um, and again, you, you have a person running that script because they, they're probably going to have to make modifications as things evolve. But once once you feel like that is um, once you get to a point where that person is not making any more modifications to the script, they're just changing the parameters. Then you can put that into you know AWS Batch or um, where, whatever you know whatever system you want to use to automate it and have it you know triggered um, by by data getting dropped into a certain spot. Um, and so so the point is that as the the kind of the um, the sort of the framing the the context for this for that pre processing changes you want to make sure that you're doing it in a way that's flexible enough to quickly change with with those changes and then once you get to a point where that context isn't evolving as much and you're actually just doing the same thing over and over again then you know then it's that that's the point at which you can then start to actually build something that's that that level of consistency so going from you know notebook to script to script that gets triggered automatically 